Welcome back, Nerglings. Prompted by some very interesting comments on my collecting theory video, I have recently started thinking about what my legacy in the wargaming hobby is going to be. But before we start, be sure to like, share and subscribe so you don't miss an update. So, what's your legacy? It's an interesting question. It implies that there is more to the hobby than mere pieces of metal and plastic glued together and then painted. I for one wholeheartedly agree that there is more to it than that. After all, we have hundreds of manufacturers all keen on making an impact, not only to make money from the thing they love, but also to change the very landscape of the hobby itself. Why not make waves ourselves? Let's take a look at the premier institution, the one that started it all for many of us, and one that we have all undoubtedly dabbled in to some degree, Games Workshop. Founded in 1975 by John Peake, Steve Jackson and Ian Livingstone, from its dim and distant past in manufacturing board games, it is clear from how well Games Workshop are doing today that their legacy is secure as the company goes from strength to strength. Other manufacturers have had less of an impact on the wider hobbyist directly, yet remain secure in other ways. Ralpartha Europe and Iron Winds, its sister company, continue to fly the banner for many classic Ralpartha sculpts. Indeed, they even boast a healthy selection of miniatures from other manufacturers that have since come across harder times, such as Heartbreaker. Meanwhile, many Grenadier miniatures found a home at Merleton and EM4 miniatures. So the stalwarts of the hobby live on in various guises, some original and others resurrected from the ashes. But where do we the hobbyists lie. Some of us will be immortalised in hobby history as great artists and converters. Indeed, many names have been made by the winning of painting competitions such as the Golden Demon, or by having their miniatures featured amongst other greats in the pages of the magazines of the day. Whilst others will be remembered for their contributions to the early days of the hobby. Thomas Pyrian, Andy Chambers, Jervis Johnson, Rick Priestley and the like. Others will have the opportunity and skill to partake in tournaments, earning fame and glory for their armies and themselves. This is all well and good however, but where does that leave Joe Public? Most of us, myself most of all, could never dedicate enough time and energy to a single miniature to warrant the winning of a Slayer Sword. Certainly, deteriorating eyes aside, I have no real patience or desire to conduct such an endeavour. So we will not be remembered as great painters, or lauded as the next John Blanche or Mike McVeigh. Nor have we paid service to these institutions and had our names engraved in White Dwarf and rule books abound. And perhaps we weren't skillful enough to deserve recognition in tournaments. Our contributions therefore must be different and it is up to us to decide what those contributions are to be. Of course, if you so wish to work towards the lofty heights of the Golden Demon painting competition, sell your soul to the devil himself and take up employment with Games Workshop, or sharpen your tactical acumen to a fine point, then please do so. Fame or notoriety are but a few years of practice and patience away, providing you have the raw talent to start with. Alternatively, if you care not about leaving a legacy and would rather live for the moment, then simply enjoy your version of the hobby, whatever that may be. Perhaps you're thinking that as mere peons in the great 
galaxy of stars that is the hobby fraternity, you can't contribute or make something worthy of remembrance. I would argue you are wrong. There is much that can be done to not only create greatness for yourself, but also for others. But what can we do to achieve this elusive immortality in our ever so fickle hobby? Well, let's take a look at a few things I have been considering and see if any of them click with your own musings on the matter. YouTubing. Being a YouTuber is as odd a hobby as collecting miniatures itself. It is full of pitfalls, promising much but giving very little. It is true, there are many huge content creators in the hobby. Lutin, Arch, Voldemort and the like all boast huge followings and, for the most part, I would suggest that their legacies are secure from that standpoint. However, what YouTube can give, YouTube can taketh away. Arch in particular has seen himself be hacked and banned variously throughout his tumultuous time on the platform. Whilst others struggle with various mental health issues and edicts from Games Workshop regarding copyright infringement and association. All of these things piled up may leave little in the way of positivity left in this part of the hobby. Yet hundreds, if not thousands, of us enjoy the very process of documenting and sharing our hobby pursuits. In fact, I find the making of videos quite cathartic and a good way to wind down after a particularly draining project like building and painting a large army in just a few months. Something I try to put my hand to each and every year I have been on the platform. World building. As I mentioned in my collecting theory video, playing in the worlds of our choice is one of the great draws for the hobby. But instead of merely participating in another's world, why not build your own? This is something I find particularly intriguing about the hobby. The use of collections or groups of miniatures for other purposes than for what they were originally intended. One of my own long-term hobby goals is to curate a series of books detailing my own world being fought over by the many chaotic armies I have built and are currently building. To give you an idea of where I would like them to go, I envisage each book to be somewhat akin to a Realm of Chaos book in size and style. Tables of demons' names, mutations and stories abound with illustrations and pictures of my collection. Grandiose indeed, but being able to quickly get large amounts of text down in a short amount of time, being moderately skillful with a camera and knowing a thing or two about project management, I think I have the kutzpah to do it. I guess time will tell, however. Art creation. Similar in a way to world building, the creation of your own art can be not only fun, but also an enduring memory of your love for the hobby. Whilst ill-conceived fan art is all well and good, what I'm really talking about is creating something of your own. I used to do charcoals and paintings of Lord of the Rings characters and moments. However, I always felt like I was intruding into someone else's space. It wasn't until I started doing art for my own projects that I started to really feel like I was achieving something useful. None of it will win a prize, but many of the pieces will be used in my own world building throughout the books I wish to create and that is good enough for me. Sculpting. Those of us who love the hobby enough sculpt our own miniatures, either for personal use or to sell to the community. 
I have recently started my sculpting career with the creation of a giant chaos battering ram in a familiar riff on the original Citadel sculpt from the 80s. This is possibly one of the most reliable ways to pass on your hobby, prowess and skill. Through the decades, the sculpts you lovingly handcrafted will be passed on through manufacturer to manufacturer, possibly eagerly sought out by completists and savvy hobbyists alike. Who knows where your sculpting craft will take you? Perhaps you could join the pantheon of great artists alongside the likes of Tom Meir, Chaz Elliott and the Perrys. If, however, you aren't a sculptor of any great talent, there is always manufacturing miniatures for others. Manufacturing. Of course, the original manufacturers of our favourite miniatures have earned their legacies through years of service to the hobby. We can do the very same with our own time and efforts. Old school miniatures and nightmare miniatures are perfect examples of what can be done by a few good pairs of hands. Indeed, combining both sculpting and manufacturing, E. Wool Clams and Fabazel's efforts have each gained marked traction over the years in their dedication to the Chaos Dwarfs. So, as you can see, there are potentially niches out there with your name on them, if you wish to succumb to the dark side of the hobby. Collecting. The very idea that you can gain fame or even notoriety from simply collecting miniatures might seem far-fetched. But put in as much time and love to a collection as Richard Hale and you may start to feel somewhat differently about it. Richard's collection is a true standout amongst the old Hammer community, as far-reaching as the Imperium itself. He has collected just about every model you could imagine and poured time and money into their restoration, preservation and presentation. It is in no small part due to his fantastic collection of giants called The Strangers that I myself began my own collection of The Big Boys. Still somewhat lagging behind him in sheer mass, I now have a sizeable troop with which to batter my foes. The way he has presented his collection is very reminiscent of the way Games Workshop would show off their own miniatures in the pages of White Dwarf in the 90s. The classic clean white to blue gradient background which directs your eyes to the miniature itself. Assisting others in their collecting is, incidentally, what we will go on to next. Assisting others. Now, this might seem counterproductive to building your own legacy in the hobby, but it makes perfect sense if you take it to such a degree as So Demons or Collecting Citadel Miniatures has. Not only are they perfect places to showcase great miniatures, but they are providing a vital service to the community writ large. I've pored over these venerable pages for many years in search of specific miniatures, using the cataloguing system to build collections and source oddities on eBay. In this way, not only can you build something that everyone finds useful, but you can cement your legacy whilst doing so. Family. Finally, and certainly not least, possibly the most important area I would like to mention is family. I was never particularly encouraged by my family in the pursuit of my hobbies, whether they were playing computer games, that will never catch on, or building and painting miniatures, what a waste of time, or working out, everyone ages and dies. 
It seems like my family always had an excuse not to do anything. Fortunately, being a self-starter, I enjoy the very notion of working towards something. Whether that be something tantalisingly out of reach in a computer game, a mighty army on the tabletop, or my own physical strength. Forging family bonds through games and painting together can be a truly rewarding experience. I hope to impart some of this dedication, essence and patience to my children as they grow up and, in doing so, build my own legacy through them. A mighty fine endeavour, if ever there was one. So, to conclude, we don't need to be perfect painters, modellers or artists to achieve things in the hobby. Persistence pays off. If you do something for long enough, you will inevitably become great at it, similar to quantity having a quality all of its own. To produce longevity, you must have an idea of what you want to achieve in the first place. As I mentioned, I want to create my own world with books to go alongside it. I have dabbled in sculpting and have a YouTube channel. What do you want to create of your own? Finally, if you have nothing but a lovingly curated collection of miniatures to leave to your children, perhaps that is enough to cement your legacy. So, in the immortal words of Steve Jackson and Ian Livingstone, choose your own adventure. That's just about all I have for you today. Join me next time for some more wargaming content. Thanks very much for watching. Peace.